A year and a half ago, I met a man named Ron Gibson through the PADSIP program run at Hawthorne Secondary College. Ron served in World War II and was a prisoner of war in Changi. His recorded story explains just how he inspired me. My name is Ron Gibson. I was a prisoner of war in Changi Jail and this is my story. I was 21 years of age when I joined the Army at Royal Park. I joined 8th Division Signals and was posted overseas to Malaya. This was before war broke out in that area. Uh, we landed at Kuala Lumpur in northern Malaya, worked our way down the peninsula with the Japs following. We were, ch we were taken prisoner of war on the island of Singapore and uh, I witnessed the signing of the surrender by General Percival. We were prisoners for three and a half years. Conditions were horrific. Living on rice only, very few uh, additives of green. Our bodies uh, went down to absolutely skin and bone. We were shipped by rail to uh, Burma, or the Burma border, and worked on the Hellfire Pass, uh, as helping to build the railway. All this labour work was done by pick and shovel. No mechanical means whatsoever. I was working on the railway there when I scalded my leg with a billy of tea. Uh, my leg was wrapped in a putty to keep the mud out, so therefore it held the hot material to the leg, which resulted in, in a very, very severe skull. No medication at the time to uh, assist healing, and the, the wound was scraped with a teaspoon daily to make it bleed to prevent gangrene. Eventually, a small amount of medication came into the camp and it was applied, sulfonalamide was applied to my leg for, and left alone for 48 hours. And in that time, the wound turned pink and I've had no trouble with it since that day. We had a radio in one cell. There were three men to a cell, but we weren't locked in. We removed a large brick, and the brick was uh, 18 inches by nine, by nine again by 18 inches. We removed that brick, put the radio in the wall, and sealed it up again, and it was tuned to the BBC Midnight News. You had to put your ear to the wall to hear the announcers uh, on, on the radio. Okay. A rumour went through the camp that the war was over, cheers everywhere, morale in the hospital rose, and uh, great expectations. But when the, we still went out on working parties onto the aerodrome, and the rumour was squashed, death rate in the hospital increased. Shortly after that, about three or four days, a B B-59 bomber flew over dropping leaflets, telling us that the Japanese had surrendered. But we still worked for another three days before the word came down from high hierarchy of the Japanese that the war had finished. And Lord Mayor Batten actually uh, came and visited us in groups of a hundred, there's too many of us. So we were broken up into groups of a hundred and he got up on a, on a table and spoke to us. He had his wife with him, she was a little thing, and we'd close ranks after he walked yeah. through. Okay. And he had to make, open the ranks up for his wife to come through. <laughs> yeah. That was an inspirational story in itself. He has taught me to have pride and respect for the people who are serving our country now, in war or as peacekeepers. He's made me understand the meaning of work and true loyalty that anyone can achieve, whether it's at school or sport. Ron still attends the PADSIP program, inspiring students just like me.